So yeah, I was, I was one of the uh, early entrepreneurs of the online learning industry in the UK and Europe. Uh, built my first company to be uh, a few hundred people, um, built thousands of courses out to millions of adults, and I failed. Um, what we delivered was, was pretty bad, despite winning, uh, I guess, awards, um, what we did. And it didn't really help us towards, I guess, what was the big question today, uh, which we'll kind of talk through, which is, uh, how do we democratise education for everyone? How do we provide world-class free education to every child in the world? Where, where this question came from uh, was from 20 years ago when uh, I, I went to India for the first time. Uh, an amazing experience, uh, met amazing people, but also was pretty struck by seeing that level of poverty for the first time, especially coming from uh, a Western country. Uh, and I remember one really vivid moment for me, uh, a young girl who, five, six years old, the same age as my, my first son now. Um, I, I remember vividly her hair, so kind of sun, sunburnt hair, big brown eyes, and the huge smile uh, that when I gave her the rupees that she, she was begging for. Uh, and as she walked away, I guess that, that question popped to my head to say, how can we provide, how can I provide um, the opportunity that I've had that my parents worked so hard to give for me, which I didn't probably appreciate at the time. Um, and it didn't really, I didn't really have the opportunity to get involved uh, um, so yeah, so about 10 years later, I've managed to sell the company, um, managed to, to find a charity that could allow me to start to learn on the ground. Um, they were, this great charity was putting IT labs into schools across Africa. Uh, I recognised there's some value I could add and allowed me to start to understand some of the challenges kind of right on the ground. So I managed to travel from west to east to South Africa, uh, putting classrooms um, and digital education into that, into those classrooms. Uh, it was an amazing experience, but at the same time also recognised kind of still failing on the, on the bigger scale. Um, and I guess it really came to a moment when, you know, and the belief was absolutely that, um, I guess back there, that if you can provide access to technology to a kid to learn from, then they should be able to learn anything. That's the theory. But obviously in those classrooms, there's a thousand kids, there's one, there's one classroom, uh, and therefore one hour a week is not going to really allow us to achieve that, that goal with that type of perspective. Um, and when I was lucky enough to meet one of the education ministers from Tanzania, he, he put it really eloquently to me. He said, look, it's great what you're doing, great that you kind of get involved, and technology is definitely part of the answer. Um, but think bigger. Um, it's definitely going to take a, a lifetime if we try to, you know, just educate teachers um, just because it's going to take 30,000 alone just for, just for Tanzania. So technology is, is part of the answer, but think bigger. How do you provide world-class education to every child in our country, a uh, continent or the world? I thought, wow, that's, that's the question, right? That's, that's a great question. Uh, I went back to everything I knew and knew that everything that I'd been selling to corporates and had sold my previous company on wasn't going to work. It was going to take too long, take too much money, and the end product would be uh, millions of kids. Kids hate me in the same way those corporates, the adults who did, who kind of went through that first generation of boring learning. But it did allow us, at least allow us to understand that we needed to start from a different place. That, you know, that wasn't the place to start from. And actually, there wasn't really much to build from, but we had to start from a, a fresh piece of paper. And then the question says, okay, where do you start? It's such a big area, right? Well, you know, where do you start? So I guess you've got to start where it's relatively easier to the world you come from. So for us, secondary school and education made a lot of sense. Um, specifically, uh, for us, that was an easier, an easier route through. And actually, we could recognise that that's the big area where kids are dropping out from school for a whole variety of reasons uh, across the world. Um, but then who do you, how do you take that next step forward? So do you try and work through governments? and the pace that governments work, so that's going to take some time. Uh, do you work through the school system? And, and some school systems are great and they want to be progressive, but to find that that's those schools, it, it's pretty rare. Um, and I guess our perspective was, uh, told to me from a guy in South Africa, say, if they look at how apartheid was, was ended, ultimately it wasn't because the ANC was so powerful, it's because the revolution started with the kids. So in our world, we thought that's exactly the same thing that needs to happen with education. If we're going to completely change education, then the revolution needs to happen with the children. We need to build something for them that they want to use. That's so engaging, that's such a great experience, that actually it's their choice. Um, and, that's what they, and that's exactly what we set out to do. At the same point, though, there's a lot of questions that come from that. Um, we looked at it, there was 50 or 60 big questions that we had to try to answer from that. But ultimately, I think it comes down to kind of four, four big areas. Um, one is how do you create that, that content, that experience, um, the end-to-end -end experience that's engaging, that people want to use, that children want to use. Uh, second, how do you produce it in a time that, that means it's, it's doable, that it's not going to take you forever and take 10, 20 years, or the £170 million pounds that the UK government put aside to do a similar project. Um, and how do you distribute it? How do you get it accessed? How do you get it into the hands and the minds um, of the children? And then once you have those great ideas, 
who's going to pay for it? How do you fund it? And bit by bit, I think we've solved uh, each of those big challenges. Um, the, the first one, we, uh, we had to completely blow up the way that online learning was being produced. So the, the current technique used by most corporations uh, and individuals and companies is you, you find an expert, you interview them, you write stuff down, you create, a, a, in essence, a Hollywood production process to create what at the end of it is actually pretty uninspiring. So we, again, we knew that wasn't going to work because we kind of failed first time around uh, in terms of the engagement aspect to it. So we started again and we, uh, we brainstormed, we experimented, we argued, uh, and eventually we found a technique that's essentially so simple that it, it works brilliantly. Um, go find a, a subject like chemistry, break the, break the subject down into individual concepts. So someone like chemistry is 240 concepts, you know, to get that, that grade, um, maths 140, and then go and find the best teacher you can, the best person in the world you can, to explain that live and digital, and, and make that explanation the most irresistibly concise explanation you can find. Uh, once you have that irresistibly concise explanation, we cut it, we edit it, and get one designer that animates it to make it easier to understand, uh, and easier to engage with, and easier to get back to. Um, so that's the, the, the first step, and maybe just to see a quick example of one of the 500 that we've done that's already all free and, and out there to the world. There are trillions of good bacteria living in your gut that are essential to your health. In fact, there are approximately 10 times more bacterial cells than human cells in your body. They can keep the produce vitamins, prevent tumour formation, help the immune system fight pathogens, and protect against carcinogens, amongst other benefits. Bacteria cells are very small, much smaller than plant and animal cells. They are found practically everywhere on Earth and live in some of the most unusual and seemingly inhospitable places. So, uh, so we've broken the, the curriculum down into these individual bite-sized content, making them available uh, free of charge. Uh, as a teacher, as a trainer, though, obviously we miss um, what we used to get being in front of a class. And you know, the, the great thing about being a teacher is those epiphany moments you have when you see the, you know, the, the light bulb goes on, the pupils dilate, and the, um, and, and the child's joy in their face, and to see your, the flowers grow in front of you. We don't really get that in the online world. Uh, we do get some likes, uh, um, and, and we did get some comments. Uh, and here's a, here's a quick example of how we get our gratification. So we think we've solved, we've solved the first problem in terms of at least how to create engaging content in a cost-effective way and distribute that and make that freely available to everyone. So we're halfway through the, the actual GCC curriculum in terms of maths and sciences, uh, completely chemistry, and halfway through, through uh, to the other subjects. And I guess, standing on a stage here, or nearly stage, uh, um, I'll make a commitment that we're going to finish this, uh, this first phase of our project within 12 to 18 months. Um, so, so that's our first stage, if you like, the, the content aspects of what we achieve. Second part then distribution, and it became pretty evident, I think, even five, six years ago when we started this phase, that, um, that mobile technology was going to be the key to distribution. You know, it obviously wasn't going to be a, a PC-only type device. Uh, we could look back then and realise that actually, even in developing countries, there was more people that access to mobile technology than actually sanitation. Um, so definitely this was the route to go, to go down, right down from, from, from day one. Uh, and also we can look ahead and think the type of technology which um, we need to deliver this type of content locally on every device is eventually going to come down to where it is today, where it only costs $25 to build a type of device that's going to allow us to distribute this whole thing. So today it's actually affordable, it's more affordable to build, take all the content of a kid's curriculum, enrich content from the world's experts, digitise in this way and put it onto a mobile phone than it is to buy one year textbooks. That's a pretty amazing place that we've got to what technology allows us now to do. So the third, the third aspect to, the, I guess, the big challenge is then one experience. YouTube was obviously a great place for us to start a project with that allows us to get access to uh, the world we've got to with uh, up to 100,000 uh, kids accessing it per day. You know, we don't know exactly how many people get to it because we know that teachers are using it also in a flipped classroom model. 
Um, but also we, we, we have a bigger vision of what that, that, that classroom looks like or that future platform looks like. And in our heads, that was a mixture between LinkedIn, WhatsApp, YouTube, and all these things allowing us to create a more holistic experience to what a learning journey looks like. It didn't exist, so we created it ourselves. Um, and that's called Few School, and Few School now runs alongside YouTube. YouTube, brilliant for, for that, you know, in the moment, let me search for something, and Few School allowing us to actually create that kind of bigger experience and that bigger end to end experience, both completely uh, free to the world. Um, and then from the funding side, so the funding side got solved, um, interesting enough, by what happened is we didn't realize at the time, but by solving these challenges with a, a more pure social perspective on it, we actually solved some big problems for corporations around the world. So the ideas that, that were created here from both a content methodology and a platform side now creates the corporate business. So we now have 100 people working that corporate business, um, servicing these concepts, what, from Spotify in Stockholm to Vodafone in London to, to Sony in California. And the profits we make from that fully funds this project. Um, and allows us to have a dedicated team of four to five people, which allows us to go to a dozen people by the end of the year. So the funding part we feel really comfortable that now we've worked that part out to allow us to continue the journey and allow us to go past um, the stage we want to get to. And also, I guess the other thing that, that we, I guess, me personally, that we love is having that innovation that allows us to come from both our own teams, but obviously at the same time, being able to choose clients that we can work with that are going to drive innovation and we can take their great ideas from their great people, obviously, as well as having ours. So, you know, the, the, the world of innovation is uh, limitless as long as we connect to the right people. So, again, I think that's a, that's a side benefit that we really enjoy. And, and what starts happening now is for the first time is that we're starting to see the most progressive governments reach out. So the Ministry of Singapore uh, is ranked as number one uh, education in the world right now. It's now officially using uh, our content as part of its reference curriculum. So that's an amazing site to be in. You know, when you get that phone call and you kind of think it's a, a joke call from a friend of yours. But it was real and they're definitely using it, which is, uh, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, um, so, you know, we're not at the ocean yet, by no means. You know, but we've definitely gone from a drop in the ocean to what we think is a good-sized stream. Um, with 25,000 people every day, um, and this is the first time, first time we've ever publicly talked about it. So there's no PR, you know, we just really wanted to try to get, uh, I guess, the, the mechanisms working and to learn what's working, what's not working, you know, before we start to scale and go to that next level. So the next question for us, now that we know we can see the end of that first journey, and to be fair, that looked like an impossible journey five, six years ago. How do you digitize a curriculum with no money and no way of doing it, knowing everything you've done so far has always failed? So, you know, now we see a year away, you know, we've got to that first step. Stage one's kind of done. At least for the base, you know, for, for the first curriculum, with many more ideas, do many more things. So, so now how do we go from our stream to a raging river before we go from the river to the, to, to the ocean? And, and this, again, is through, we need to go through a new learning curve. Uh, again, not alone, but we now need to choose partners and, and projects to work with. So we've got four key projects now which we're working on, which we believe we're going to learn and experiment, fail, succeed, and learn great lessons from to allow us to get to that next step. So the first one is a, a great pilot we're about to kick off with uh, the Western Cape government in South Africa, uh, where we're going to provide, in terms of the pilot, the devices, uh, the content, the platform, everything, in order to see that working directly with the school system, if we can shift the grade average from one level significantly up, uh, but all the techniques and technologies that we talked through so far. Um, the second project is uh, working one of the top schools, so St Paul's, um, to see if we can also use different, different techniques of education. So at the moment we've got teachers teaching kids, but let's try actually getting the smartest kids teaching the kids. So we're going to actually digitally record uh, the best explanation from the smartest kids and seeing actually does that have a better connection with the audience, with the kids we're trying to teach around the world, than it is adults teaching children. We see that same effect in, in other audiences around the world. So that's going to be exciting to see that come through. Uh, the third project is uh, work with Princess Trust. So Princess Trust, for those who don't know, an amazing charity that um, helps 50,000 people a year in, from disadvantaged scenarios back into education, um, entrepreneurship, or back to work. Um, and again, through the technology, we're now going to use remote mentoring, remote coaching, to allow us to try to double that reach out to 100,000 people every year. So again, what we learn from that, we want to directly bring back into Few School and allow most, you know, mentoring, coaching to be part of this bigger, bigger ecosystem. And the fourth is a project with Cognita, which is one of the, um, I guess, the best network of schools globally. 70 of the top schools around the world, I think three in the top 100. And this is getting teachers to teaching teachers. They recognise that there's a teacher in South America who's got a great technique to do something, versus a teacher in London has got a great technique to do something else. So using, again, social learning to allow easy capturing of great knowledge from across the world from the teachers, because you've allowed all the teachers to get better, then indirectly allowing the students to get better as well. So again, using the concepts from them you know, in the future, we believe is going to allow us to go from that, from that stream to that raging river. 
Um, so then phase three, so how do we eventually get to the ocean? How do we you know, get out there to, to, to the full place and the full remit we want to get to? And I guess the, the obvious and the easy answer to that is together. Um, we see ourselves you know, just as part of a bigger ecosystem um, you know, playing our role. But actually, we now see it with possibility that as we're coming together and maybe governments are recognising they don't need to create everything by themselves, ground up, and, and keep reinventing the wheel, that if governments get involved, you know, which are starting now to reach out and do that, um, we, we see uh, teachers, both current teachers and retired teachers, want to play an active role, perhaps in the future of the mentoring and coaching aspects to it. And definitely you know, more and more tech companies being able to add so much value to the, to the concepts around here, whether that's free hosting or zero cost access to free learning for a learning site through here. There's so much that we're seeing technology companies want to connect to to allow that, that bigger goal to happen. So I think absolutely the possibility of where we're going, we, you know, we can see it. It's not an impossible dream like it was maybe when we started back then. Um, but I guess ultimately, you know, we, we get asked a, a lot and say, well, why, you know, why do this? Why get involved in this and, and why does it matter? Um, and I think it comes down to just three things. Um, I think first as a, as a parent, um, I think all of us feel this innate responsibility inside us for responsibility for the education of our own children. Um, and I think that if, with the knowledge that so many parents out there can't give their children the same opportunities that we have, to be involved in something that can do that, I think is truly amazing. Um, I think secondly, I, I think a society. I, I think it's interesting now that we're now in a place where the technology and the ideas exist to do this. It wasn't the case before. Um, so, so now I, I think there feels a moral responsibility that now there is the technology and the way and the resource to do this, that then we should. Um, you know, the, the world is full of problems and full of issues, but definitely one of the answers towards this is education. And I think ultimately, though, you know, it's still about the child. For me, it's still about that child I, I saw 20 years ago. Um, but also, I think now, with the possibility that we think that, you know, together, that um, we can, I guess, remove the barriers of non-education towards a child um, to allow them to use education to build their dreams upon, it, it's just something to be amazing to play a small part in. Thank you.